Robert Morris and Gateway Church has been in the headlines for several weeks now and not for the right reasons. Opinions and disdain has manifested in every way and rightfully so based on what the then lead pastor Robert Morris did. We are all entitled to our own opinions and there's no denying that the facts that Robert Morris should be penalized for the crime that he committed against then 12 year old Sidney Clemenshire. Jesus Christ, while on this earth, was a servant leader and gave us the blueprint on how to conduct ourselves. Of course, he was and is still perfect in every way. But as a pastor of a church, Robert Morris did not live out his duties due to his omission of the facts specific to this case. Now listen, we are all sinners in need of a savior. So I don't want you to think that I'm saying that Robert should have been without spot or blemish during his pastoral duties, but he certainly has put a sore eye on the already frowned upon megachurch and celebrity pastorship, if you will. Robert is only one man, and yes, some of the church elders of Gateway Church should have known, should have done a more thorough investigation of what transpired through the decades, but I'm not going to put 100% responsibility on the members and ex-members of Gateway, because just like you and I, this threw everyone, this threw everyone for a loop. In this video, I want to talk to you about my experience at Gateway Church and how it ultimately had an effect on my spiritual walk as a former member. You see, I joined Gateway Church back in 2012 and was a faithful member, in my opinion, for a little over two years. The only reason I started going to another church was because I met my soon-to-be wife and we had other plans of relocating to a different part of the city. Mind you, at that time, prior to meeting my now wife, I battled with a 20-year sex addiction and the Gateway community, along with Celebrate Recovery, became a pivotal part in my healing and rededication to, G to Jesus Christ. Also, the small group, the singles group that I was a part of at that time, it played a huge role in my relationship with Christ, in my rededication to Christ. I was baptized at an early age at around seven or eight. And I knew Jesus Christ for myself, but I really didn't have a walk with him. I was far from the Lord, you know, starting in, in middle school all the way up to college. But after I joined Gateway Church and I got baptized again, that's when the fruits of the Spirit started to show. Not saying that I was perfect, but the small group in the community that I was a part of at the time made me realize that I was not alone in my fight and my journey. But that's a different video in itself. Gateway Church is a Bible-based, spirit-empowered church. And despite the actions of Robert Morris, I experienced this empowerment for myself. As you should know, the structure made up of bricks and two by fours is not the actual church. It's just a building. But every breathing and living person who believes in Jesus Christ and confesses with their mouth that he is Lord, is the actual body of Christ. And during my time at Gateway, I truly felt that the congregation was healthy and attempting to live out their faith as best as possible. Of course, every church has issues because we are all sinners and our flesh can easily get in the way. But overall, the church in my opinion was healthy. We're all about people is the motto or statement, I should say, at Gateway. And they truly were and still is, in my opinion. Robert Morris was one bad apple out of the bunch, but the church is not ruined because God is still on his throne and his word will never change. Now, one of the ways Gateway expresses their love for him is through their love for people. And they do this by helping people who come to Gateway grow in their relationship with the Lord. I certainly grew in my relationship with God at that time. They made me feel welcome and unashamed to express with love and gratitude for God. And I'm sure any of you who were members or are still members can attest to that. The praise and worship was exceptional. The phrase, the body of Christ, is a common New Testament metaphor for the church. 
all those who truly are saved. The church is called one body in Christ, and that can be found in Romans 12, 5. One body, and that can also be found in 1 Corinthians 10, 17. The body of Christ and the body in Hebrews. The church is clearly equated with the body of Christ. That can be found in Ephesians 5, 23 and Colossians 1, 24. Now, when Christ entered our world, he took on a physical body prepared for him. Through his physical body, Jesus demonstrated the love of God clearly, tangibly, and boldly, especially through his sacrificial death on the cross. Now, after his bodily ascension, Christ continues his work in the world through those he has redeemed. The church now demonstrates the love of God clearly, tangibly, and boldly. And not all these things have transpired with Gateway Church and Robert Morris. The church is still demonstrating the love of God clearly, tangibly, and boldly. Now, in this way, the church functions as the body of Christ. Members of the body of Christ are joined to Christ in salvation. Also, we can add to this, the members of the body of Christ follow Christ as their head. And Gateway Church and those members now and at that time, we follow Christ as the head of our lives. You can take this further and say members of the body of Christ are the physical representation of Christ in this world. The church is the organism through which Christ manifests his love to the world today. The members of the body of Christ are indwelt by the Holy Spirit of Christ. Also, the members of the body of Christ possess a diversity of gifts suited to particular functions. We all possess different gifts and callings from God. My passion may not be your passion, but as a brother and sister in Christ, we're all one. We're all created in God's image. So that was my experience. No church is perfect. And a lot of things have gone on lately with the spiritual leaders and the ministers and the head pastors of the church. They've been in the forefront because of technology, because of the access of um, news that is so quick as far as Twitter and social media. This has been going on for ages, unfortunately, because we live in a fallen world. So that's my experience with Gateway Church. I could talk more about my experience, but just for the sake of this, I'm going to keep it at that. Yes, Robert Morris did some, some horrible things, and he should be held accountable. The statute of limitations is up. Um, if you were a member of Gateway Church or currently a member of Gateway Church, let me know what you think about it. It's a huge church. At that time, there was not as many um, campuses as there is now. But Robert Morris was my pastor, and I clearly remember him saying that he had a moral failure, and um, he dealt with, you know, an addiction, fornication, and adultery with a young woman, not with a kid at the time. So again, if you have not checked out those previous videos that I made of Gateway Church and the scandal, the choices made by Robert Morris, please do so. I'm going to continue to pray for everyone that's involved, specifically for Miss Cindy Clemenshire, the person who was the lady who was taken advantage of, and everyone that has been taken advantage of um, by someone against their will. So I just pray for everyone that's still a part of, of Gateway Church. If you're heartbroken, if you're you're angry, if you're disappointed. Every emotion that you have is valid. But let's remember, Robert Morris was the pastor. He's human. And his mistakes and choices were devastating. Let's keep the main thing the main thing and, and pray for the victims of everyone that was taken advantage of. Let's pray for the victims of these innocent people who don't have a voice. So while you may be disappointed and saddened that this happened to Robert, that doesn't matter. What we need to be concerned with is the individuals who are exerting their power on innocent 
men and women, boys and girls that don't have a voice. So let's pray for everyone collectively. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you and I pray that everyone that was affected by these horrible choices will be healed and that they would look to you to gather their, their strength and their confidence and their will. Know, Lord, that they may feel broken in this moment, but their purpose is not gone. Their purpose is still there and you are still on the throne and you sit high and you look low. And I ask that you would just pierce their hearts and touch them, Lord, and give them a comfort, a peace that passes all understanding. We don't know why certain things happen, but we do know that we live in a fallen world and that your love, your unconditional love, your mercy, your grace abounds. But there's consequences to our actions. There's consequences to our sins. There's consequences to our choices. I pray that you would just touch those that have been affected by this in the most intimate way. Be with and guide the little girls and the kids that have been taken advantage of. Give everyone strength to be accountable for their actions and to be 100% transparent. Forgive me of my sins, Lord. I repent of those right now. And every person that I, that I know, that I knew when I was going to Gateway Church, that are still there and still members, give them strength and allow them to move forward in your faith and your love. In Jesus Christ, I pray these things. Amen. God loves you. Take care. Always strive to remain set apart. We'll talk soon.